What's been up? WTF. W. O. T. W. With Rudy Rue. So, um, is there an iconic figure, mainstream or otherwise, you admire from the past whom you feel you'd be able to portray in a movie? Huh? That you admire from the past who you feel oh, you'd be able yeah. to portray? I would love Tina Turner. You, you would want to play her? I wouldn't mind. Yes. Yeah. Tina, say hi. Hi. <laughs> no, he's hungry. Like he's like, why are you subjecting me <laughs> to this? <laughs> um, do you remember the exact moment you discovered your voice? I think I was about ten. It was a, I did a little, a little solo in church. That was one moment. Oh. And the the next moment that really really stood stood out. We were doing the Wiz. That's what it was. We were doing the Wiz. You see the Wiz? <laughs> yeah. So we were doing the Wiz and. I had a part in, um, it was, the, you know, the, one of the musical parts in like my solo. And I just remember getting a standing ovation mm -hmm. and I'm like looking around like, hey, okay. <laughs> oh, and so it was before like, that your family wasn't encouraging you to sing or anything? Well, it was because we was always singing. It was no big deal. You just singing, singing in church. Okay. Yeah. She sings. She sang her part. It was everybody sang. But it was the moment, like I said, doing that play and actually having a microphone and all eyes on me in more of a like a musical professional type of environment, you know, like mm -hmm. a stage play. And then people like, you know, that was kind of diff prior to that singing around the house, you know, on the porches in the neighborhood or in school. It was just the thing to do. It was a normal came natural. Yeah. But when I was like thrust into this like theatrical moment, it just was like, oh, maybe there's something. Maybe something. I am special. But didn't you, because you have a distinct way of singing and a sound. Do other people in your family sound that way as well? Um, I think I have my own thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, all right. So we were first introduced to you on the Bait movie soundtrack back in 2000. How did that opportunity come about? It came about um, the roots. I was um, in Philly at the time, beginning on my project, The Change Is Gonna Come, which became The Change Is Gonna Come album. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, working with some of the producers that were working on projects that was affiliated with the roots stuff and um, the label that I was signed to at the time was producing and um, the soundtrack, the bait soundtrack. So being that I was one of the up and coming new artists, they were like, this would be a dope introduction for you and the collab. And so they put us all together and that's how it came about. Oh, so the Roots produced the track as well? Mm-hmm. Dope. So when you look at your Instagram feed nowadays, most of your posts are advocating for change and combating systemic racism. Your first hit song, Music, was also a bit of a protest on the state of R&B in that period. Where did you get your passion for activism from? Being Black. Yeah, that helps. Being Black and growing up in South Central LA. Yeah, but I know a lot of people that grew up in South Central that gives no fucks and just go with the flow. So there's something in you. Well, yeah, I grew up at a time in a neighborhood before... I should say the regentification really, really started to kick in in different parts. And mm -hmm. it was extremely black. So I was able to witness the dopeness of the blackness as also the, you know, not so. I, I clearly remember, for example, the verdict being read of not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty four times mm -hmm. in regards to Rodney King. Yeah. And I remember the feeling of you slapped me in the face already and now you just stabbed me again in that same spot by telling me you didn't slap me in the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all watched as this man was beat. Yeah. Beaten. And, and I think that was the first time that we got to see something that we know happened all the time. Like, right. But yeah, prior to that, that was just happened to be caught on video. Mm -hmm. It was all, it was had been happening. And so when you know these things have been happening and you grow up in that. I want the food. I want the food. He wants the food. I mean, Leela. I'm like, coming. I want the food. 
cut it out. I'm still in the Zoom. You want to go eat? Go get your go get your snack. You're raising a black man. When he's hungry, he knows. So. Um, Okay, just don't waste it, okay? Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's proactive. That's good. Thank you. Good job. So, um, yeah, and just when you grow up in an environment where you see certain things, I mean, and I also, yeah, my family was proud Black people, very active, if you will, activists. And so, and then I, and I studied. I studied under a lot of activists and in college. And I was always, I just always... I probably came out the wound like, I'm black. It's just been in me. And do you feel that if you didn't um, find success in music, do you think you would have pursued civil service? It's possible, because I did flirt with the idea of being an attorney. I worked in Johnny Cochran's law firm, and I worked in a couple different, um, prior to the music thing, or while I was working in music, still trying to eat and stuff. Um, I worked in some for law firms and I really just didn't like it, to be honest, mainly because I'm so uh, rough around the edges, like what you see now. I don't like, you know, the the constraints. Of the, being politically you know, correct and diplomatic all the time? I don't want to put on a, a suit or gotcha. a nice dress all the time. And I don't want to, sometimes I don't feel like that. So I didn't fit the format because I'm like a, a wild child flower girl, if you know, one of those. And it's like, if I want to wear my fro or my hair braided, that's what I want to do. And if I want a nose piercing in my, my nose, that's what I want to do. And in those corporate environments, it's not always fitting. Everybody knows that Marvin's gone. Still, I gotta tell you what's going on. Set the music's gone. So how do you feel about the state of music now? There's been a lot of new artists to come on the scene since I have came on in 2005 that helped push the, the needle. Mm -hmm. And um, that makes me very proud. Even with all that we're going through now in the pandemic, you still continue to see some artists, you know, and their artistry being expressed in a really, really sly way. You can't ever be mad at that. Um, it'd be an understatement to say that you're one of the most slept on vocalists and actual performers out there, in my opinion. Uh, do you share that sentiment? Um, be sure. honest now. Why do you think that is, though? Um, it's a few reasons, I would say. I, I didn't, you know, when you, you don't have the big, sometimes the big machines behind you to help market and promote, mm -hmm. that plays a part. You know, when I first came on in 05, I was signed to Warner Brothers, but even then, they were just releasing the, the record almost five years after they had signed me, because I was signed back in 2000, oh, and then wow. I was shelved for like five years project. So by the time that album came out, it was already five years old. And the push was never really, really ever there. It was like a little bit, but it was more like, well, let, let's just go let's on and Let's just get it out, out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? But did you feel a connection to the material even five years later? Cause Absolutely, you... because I feel like the music at that time, any music that that is timeless mm -hmm. is going to transcend the test of time. So while it was five years old to me, it was it was five years new to y'all at that time. Yeah, you know you're definitely and ahead. I was already on to something else, but... The, the message and the power in the music was still very prevalent at the time. You probably even more so at the time that it came out. So, um, but do, do you think that being cast on the show R&B Divas accomplished what you set out to do? Um, for me, it did because I have my audience and then there was like another audience. And so mm -hmm. it, it did that. It opened up the door for even more people were like, oh my gosh. And even some of the people that felt they knew me after that, I think they felt like they knew me even better than what they thought. Yeah, of course. And I mean, we spoke about the misconceptions earlier, but other than that also, I mean, that mm -hmm. was, you, you dropped before social media was popping. So mm -hmm. you were a mystery. 
Yeah. And I think also considering the whole reality show format, you also came off as like the voice of reason, which also helped like, you know, that you were like, you know, true to yourself and just not with the bullshit, which is how you are in real life. So I could imagine it didn't hurt you. Uh, would you do another reality show? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Have you been approached since? Yeah. Please. It wasn't one of them like ratchet ones, I hope. No. So as we brace ourselves for a second wave of Corona while dodging racism, we're going to need some new music to get us through. So can we expect a soul massage from you? Absolutely. I've been working on my next project as we speak. So y'all be on the lookout for it. It's coming. What's um, it? When? Next year. Next year. Okay. Absolutely. But is there a single coming soon? Yeah. The single. Is there something I could play today? No. Like not even a snippet? Nah. Damn. You got to son. wait. You got to wait. You, you can't even to... hum your favorite song from the new album? Just hum it? Um, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> My daughter said no. My daughter. <laughs> Damn. What's that? Your PR agent? Yeah. She said yeah. absolutely yeah. at that. Wow. Yeah, you got the, the you got you got the little President Barack Obama mini me over here talking about he ain't see. <laughs> We got Michelle Obama over there like. <laughs> she said, no, absolutely not. Wow. Yes. You got to tell her I'm not like the other. I'm not press. Come on. She said, she said no. Thank you for listening. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the heck up out of here. Please be a friend. Tell a friend. Subscribe. Do something with your laugh. Catch you next week on WTFW. O-T-W. With Rudy Rue.